Hello once again, my name is Anthony Gray. I'd like to welcome you to the secrets of wet on wet oil painting. We're going to do something very crazy uh, today. As you can see, I have my uh, 24 by 18 canvas. And uh, I've uh, did a little, a little something different. Got a liquid black on top, liquid white on the bottom. I did some cutouts on uh, the opposing corners. Okay. Um, it looks kind of like a lava lamp type of design. I put contact paper on the canvas. Um, they don't make contact paper like they used to. They used to make some very strong stuff. Um, and if you can probably find it, it'll cost you a little bit, but it, it'll be worth it in the long run. All right. So I'm going to do something a little unusual. And, uh, uh, paint with this type of uh, stenciled out design on the board. Um, it would be something unique, uh, something that would catch people's eye. And um, it's one of those type of paintings that would probably be sure to be a hot seller if you choose to uh, sell your works of art. Okay, and we're going to get right on to it. I really don't have a specific theme of what to do. <coughs> uh, for today <coughs> but we're gonna just give it a whirl all right um what I'm gonna do first off is uh start off with uh, some cloud formation I'll probably keep the um, upper part fairly uh fairly dark okay but what I want to do is when I do the cloud formations that you give it a little bit of um, I guess just to give it a little bit of mysterious aura to it. All right. I think I'm even going to uh, put some stars in there. Maybe maybe have it uh, be some kind of a dusk or uh, nighttime scene of some sort. But uh, we're going to get right on to what I'm going to use a little bit of um, probably a little bit of phthalo, phthalo blue. I just want to touch up the night sky just a tad. Not, I'm, I don't want to put too much of it on there, but just enough just to give it a hint of a little bit of color. And so on top of the black, okay, it, it is a transparent color. Um, so what I'll do is I'll mix a little bit of titanium white with it just to lighten it up just a little bit. It's going to mix in with that liquid black, okay. I just want to give it a slight, a slight or a little bit of darkness in here. Just a little bit of the blue. Not much. Just put it around in there. And just whisk it back and forth a little bit. Like so. So it just gives a hint of a little color in there. Okay. Like I said, it's mixing in with the liquid black. And that's all good. Okay. Egg strokes. Just go across to get rid of the, um, get rid of some of those lines. Okay. Well, that's basically all I want, just a little bit of it in there, not too much, okay. Now, I would like to put um, some cloud formations in that. I'm going to rinse off the brush fairly well here because colors like phthalo blue and crimson red, um, crimson, uh, sap green are pretty strong colors and you want to clean your brush off fairly well. That's all it takes, just a little bit. All right. Um, when it comes to doing these type of stencils, I use an X-Acto knife, and you, it, it's, it's something you really can't rush when you do the cutouts. Okay. Make sure your X-Acto knife is fairly uh, sharp. Also, it helps a great deal. Um, it really will, in the long run. Now, what I'm going to use is um, a little bit of titanium white, but I'm going to put some blue in that titanium white. On that dark background, it's going to show up as white anyway. Okay. And the type of clouds that I want, um, maybe I'll have the ones that I like. I like the ones that kind of dance around a little bit. Okay. So I'll just use the brush. Maybe the fan brush. Okay. And I'll just let it just 
See, just let it dance around, Mr. Ted. Um, maybe I'll just put the claw, let it dance around down here like that. Have it come up, go right off the page. Okay, just have it go right off the page. Okay. Now the blue mixed in with the white will give a very interesting effect when it comes to uh, blending all of that in. Okay, maybe you might want a cloud that has more white than the blue. Okay, also adds to that era, aura of um, mysteriousness. I'm going to have it go right off the top here. And just go right on off here. So, sort of like that. And maybe I'll put um, a touch of one down here. Just a touch. Just have it dance. And just go right on across. Like so. Okay. Now, contact paper, like I said, this type of contact paper is not as strong, so, um, oh, you put it on before you put any of the liquid mediums on. Alright. Don't put what liquid white and liquid clear, liquid uh, black on, and then try to put the, uh, the sticky surface on because it, it just won't hold all right so don't don't do that you just you just open yourself up for a lot of heartache all right now what I'm gonna do is just blend and I'm gonna blend the bottom out and it the bottom will blend right into that black okay which produces an incredible effect okay circular motions just the bottom part of the cloud Okay, that's all you need to do. Circular motion, bottom part of the cloud. Okay, just the bottom part. All right, rub it in there pretty good. Like I said, you want you want to maintain the illusion that they're disappearing, or they're you know they're coming right in from out of the dark of the sky itself. Go right on up in there. I usually would change or flip a brush, brush around, but that won't be necessary for this. I said you would still want to keep the air of, of mysteriousness in those clouds. Okay. I'm just wiping off the excess color off the brush. Now, just like you did with liquid on uh, white, you're just going to fluff up. Fluff up. Okay. The degree of fading you want in your clouds ultimately depends on you of how much of it you want it to blend in the back okay and just whisk right across get rid of those lines get rid of the lines okay I'm going to go back up here There you go. You see how quickly you can make those clouds? Okay. Very mysterious. Goes right into the uh, the back background. I'm going to do a little crisscross here. Go down. Go across. Get rid of some of that. There we go. Alright. There. Now you got your clouds. Okay. I'm going to do something a little different that I haven't done uh, before. I'm going to dip a little bit into the uh, magic white itself. I'll put a little bit on the brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take it with my finger and just flick it around. Because what it's going to do is give the illusion of stars back there. Okay. Give the illusion of stars. So now you got some stars back there. Alright. Don't know if you're able to see it. But I got some stars going on over there. Okay. And with liquid white, you can just as easily clean it off with a little, um, little paint thinner. Get it against the sides. Give it a good shake and finger bucket. 
right? Now, yes, I'm going to have a mountain uh, in there. I'll probably have the mountain somewhere around here. It'll probably just fade because I got the little, uh, uh, little line here. I'm going to just fade it right out and I'll just go right down there and just fade out across that way. <coughs> and we're going to get right out to it. Okay. Actually, before I do that, I got to uh, put a little more of titanium white in the, uh, there we go, on my palette here. Usually because I paint so often, so much, that I tend to forget to uh, put some of the paint on there. And it's really, it only takes a second anyway, so. And with the paint that I have scraped off, it has a mixture of blue and whatnot. I will add it to some of the other extra paint that I have. I just use it for uh, some other effects. So you can always use your leftover paint for, you know, some other kind of effects or, or um, you know, just whatever comes to, to your mind at that time. Right now I'm using Carillion Blue, the white, a little bit of sap green. I'm going to take some brown, a little bit of the crimson red. I'll, I'll put it all in there, mixing with that blue. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm uh, mixing it in pretty thoroughly. It gives me a sickly grayish green color. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I'll put a little white in there to brighten that up a little bit. And I'll probably use this as my mountain base color. Usually, your mountain color it's usually a pretty dark base, um, but you got a dark sky back there. So I'll, I just want to lighten that mountain up a little bit. And as usual, you, you know, you take it, pull it across, get yourself a nice little roll of paint. Okay. But let's get on with uh, making this mountain. I think what I want to do is, um, I think I'll just have the mountain come right here. Upward and just pull it down. Okay. I'm going to do that again with a thin roll of paint. Drag it across. And I'll do another one right here. Maybe I'll have it come up a little bit and then come straight down and across. Probably in somewhere around there. Okay. That's basically uh, what I want for the mountain. Actually, this formation is actually perfect, to tell you the truth. I don't have to do any more with that. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to use the brush that I normally use to put the paint on. I don't usually use my brush that I use the... Um, to actually uh, paint the trees or, or, or paint the sky. I usually don't use it to put the mediums on. It, it all depends on how I feel at that time. But this is the brush. Uh, it's a two inch brush. It's thinner. I usually use this to uh, um, put the mediums on. Okay, but I'm going to just use it to uh, fade out the mountains. Go down and across. Okay, they come down a little bit. Down, fade it right out. And while you're doing that, you might as well just Give it a couple whiffs. Just whisk it away there. Go down and across. Take this one down and across. As you do it, just blend it. Okay. Got one coming downward. The other one down and across. Have it fade right on out. Be very wispy. Just like so. Just fade it right on out. If you get some on the other side, that's fine. See it's coming down down there. That's okay. Blend it on out. That's all you need. Okay. I'm not really worried about down here. You can just, as you see what I'm doing, I'm just adding it on in there. Did it pick up with the, with the liquid white? Okay. And just whisk it away. Like so. Because it doesn't matter. All of that. That's going to be covered with um, other 
objects anyway, so that has no um, real bearing on anything. But there you go. All right. You can see your mountain um, over here to the uh, side there. Okay. And what I'll do with this white and blue, I'll probably have it come in front of that mountain. Okay. But that's after I add the highlights and stuff and fade it in, and I can do that afterward. Okay. But yeah, I like how that's coming out already. I will take the brush once again. It's a thin brush. Take it and use it off real good. All right. I just wipe it on the towel quick and just set it to the side. All righty. Let's put a little bit of uh, titanium white on my easel here. Just a little bit. All right. Now let's get on making some highlights here for this mountain. Usually I start off with the uh, highlight side uh, first. It's really your preference on how you want to do that. All right, and whatever direction you want to go with your mountain. Okay. Um, I think I'll have the mountains, the light source come from the upper right today. Okay. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll use um, I'll probably use the titanium, the full titanium white on this. Take it. Show you. You take it. There you go. It's right here. You just take it and go straight down with it and you just cut across. Yeah, cut across. Get your nice little roll of paint here. There we go. See that little roll? Put it in the dark. It's right there. Alright. What you do is you take your thumb, your forefinger, okay, these just guide it, and when you feel it, I'm going to have to put my head in there just to see where the mountain is, um, you're going to feel the paint touch the canvas, and lightly, very lightly, very lightly, let it break. I have it go straight down and then go across like so okay that's all it takes do the same thing with your other mountain just have it lightly come down and go straight just go across and get wider in the bottom do the same thing on this one and come right off the page okay you want to add extra little peaks here and there mountain you can just go see the angle here I move my head okay you see the angle here on the top match it and just go down across okay I'll do one here I like I like them when they're over here this angle is a little sharp so put that angle down there go right on down and across whisk it right across okay like so Basically, that's your, your mountain, your mountain range already. All right. Um, sometimes I like to put an extra P, put it up here or something like that, but I'm going to put that cloud in there. All right, but that'll be a little bit a little bit later on. All right. Now that I've done the uh, highlight side of the mountain, let's move on to that darker portion of the mountain. I'll keep, I'll do the darker portion. I'll um, make it quite dark actually. What I'll use is a little bit of, um, which I just ran out of, and it's a good thing. I'll show you that I clean these up. I'm not clean them, but uh, put the paint on. I need a little bit of uh, Fable Blue. Okay. So I'll just put a little tube of it in here. Because it only takes a second to put the paint on anyway. so. No big deal. All right. I'm going to mix a little bit of phthalo blue with black. I tend not to use black uh, as a color uh, too much. Okay. And with this color, I'm, one, I'm going to keep it marbled. Okay. There we go. That's nice. Yeah, I'll keep the black and the, uh, the blue marble. I got a little bit of, of white in it. Okay. So, 
I'll show you what it looks like marbled here. Um, there it is, right here. You can see the marbling effect, and all I did was cut across. Okay. And I'll start. I think I'll start with the uh, the larger mountain here. Now, people have a lot of problems with the mountains. As you see, I went originally down and across with all of them, down and across, and followed the pattern of your mountain. Um, now let's do the, I'll do the middle one. You just do the opposing side. So basically, you take it, match it up against the white, and just go straight down. Straight down. If you want to add a little curve to it, add a little curve to it. But basically, it's, you're going straight down with it. All right. Um, I'll do this one here. Then go down and across. And let it break. Let it catch. And even mix in with some of the white that you have in there. Remember, keep it fairly dark. Don't let it get light on you, okay? Because you need that contrast, okay, for your mountains to, to really show. But right here, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go down very lightly, down, okay? And just let it break. Just let the, let the paint break when you do these. I still want that marble effect, so I still want the colors to... Uh, show. There we go. Very dark part of the mountain. Okay. I'll put some in here. Because you got to remember um, the effect it's going to have when you fade. Um, remember you're going to you're going to fade. Uh, um, you're going to blend these colors together. Okay. Don't forget that you also be blending uh, these colors. But as you can see looks pretty looks pretty good uh, even right now <coughs> excuse me okay so that's basically how you do it just allow the paint to break um, it will be thick and thin that uh, adds to the texture of your completed painting what I'm doing right now is just wiping off the brush here okay and we're going to uh, I'm gonna set the uh, palette knife down we're gonna get to the blending part Okay, as I've said repeatedly before, take that two inch brush, all right, and you'll take it, tap, tap in the direction, okay, of the mountain, okay, and tap right in the direction of the mountain, all right, even on the other side, on the opposing side, tap in that direction, okay, and then you take it and you tap on the other side. And where you want it to be missed yet is really up to you of how far you want to go with your mist. Alright. I'm just going to wrap it on the side here. And very, very lightly, you're going to go upward in the angle of the mountain very lightly okay very lightly go on the opposing side very lightly very lightly and then you take it and lightly lightly go across make it very light light as you possibly can okay and just fade it see it all depends on how much of it, you want it misty it down on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to extra because I want it really misty down here. And just hey, lightly go across. Okay, there you go. Okay, got a nice little mist down there on the bottom. Okay, up the mountain. Got the stars, got the clouds. Now that I've done that, you thought I forgot about that cloud. I didn't forget. Use a little bit of a uh, so I think I want this cloud to be more or less in front and uh, uh, um, not only in front of, but uh, yeah, in front of the mountain, but closer than the other clouds. So I'm using pure titanium white. And once again, I'll just let her dance around. Let her dance around here. Okay, just let it dance. 
Something like that. Okay. Very simple to do. I'm going to take my one inch brush and I'll blend the bottom out. Okay. I'll blend the bottom out. And just blend it away and down the bottom. Okay. Lightly, light fluff up because you don't want to really ruin the details of your mountain. And lightly go across. Very lightly. Look at that. See that? Now you have a, a cloud actually in front of the mountain. Okay, like a little fog bank up there. Alright. Pretty hot, right? That's all it takes. You're going to rinse it off. Now because of your painting has a stencil design, uh, it's really up to you of how detailed you actually want your physical painting to be. Um, because your eye is going to go towards the uh, part that's the most flashy or observant, and which will be the actual physical design of the, uh, the board itself. Okay. Let's add some, uh, let's add a, uh, I'm going to add a little hill in this mountain, on this mountain. Okay, I'm going to use uh, that dark color of the blue and black. I'm just tapping it in a, a little bit. I want to give it a dark base. Okay, now how I'm going to do this is I'm painting right on, right across the line here. I'm tapping it in. Tapping in now into the uh, what would be the uh, liquid white. Okay, just tapping it in. And I'm gonna tap in a little bit here, go up above a little bit. Okay, and just tap, tap the color in. That's all I'm doing, just tapping in a little color. In fact, as I'm tapping it in like this, I'm going to allow it to get lighter. Okay. And same here. I'll just allow it to get a little bit lighter. Just continuously tap. And then mix in with the liquid white. Okay. Okay. Just keep tapping it in. Okay. I'm going to whisk up a, just a tad. Give the appearance of some trees. Whisk a little bit up here. Okay. Can you tap it in? Now I'm going to take <coughs> the larger foliage brush. Okay. And I'm going to fade that bottom out a little bit. A little bit here. Fade it on out. I'm going to do the same on this side. Then I'll take it and I'll go upward. Go upward with it. Because it's going to look like surrounding trees in the mist. Do the same thing here. Just take it, fade it upward. Okay. I'll take I'll take the large brush here. I got a big three inch monster. Okay. And what I'm going to take it and I'm just going to Blend some of that out of there. See that? Blend it right on out. Same thing here. You know I got this monstrous brush. Okay. Just blend it right on out of there. It's okay. I gotta put my head in the way here to make sure I got it all right. Okay. I'll blend it right on out. Now, and you see I took out a little bit of the, uh, just tap it back in and go over it. It's okay. Continue to go on up with it. And you, whoops. And just blend it right on out. Continue to blend right on out. There. Just blend it on out. All right. 
I'm going to clean off these brushes here. It's a good habit to uh, use a brush, just clean them out. Okay. This one here. This one here we just had a little bit of, it's a giant brush here, it just had a little bit of liquid white on it. So I'm not really that concerned with it. Just clean it out real good here. Larger brush, probably the, uh, well, the smaller of the larger brushes. Okay. There we go. Like I said, I generally don't know what it is I'm going to uh, put in here, but okay. Now we got a nice little hill, um, the trees and everything. I think I want to put, oh, I think I'll put some, uh, some uh, nice uh, pine trees in there. Yeah, that'll work. Now, how am I going to do that? I'm going to, well, you know what I want to do before I do that? Let's put some background trees in there. I want to put a little background trees. What I'm going to do is take... A little bit of the, the, still the dark color of the um, blue. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna still, I'm gonna stick with that darker color of blue. I'll put some uh, the, and I think I'll go a little bit into the sap green with this blue. I want to put some far off distant trees in there first. Okay. Now to do this. I'll, I'll put some here in the background, just a, just a tad of them in the background. Okay, this is all it takes. Don't destroy all of your fog area. Just something like that. Okay, something a little like that. Now I'm going to go here because I don't want to destroy all that fog up area, the misty area here. I don't want to destroy all of that. I'll keep it fairly close. You can put some up in there. Okay. And this is all it takes. Come, here, come down, come across. Just like so. And maybe, maybe, I'll have it come across. Like that. Come downward. And now you got, you got two rows of them. Okay. Now that I've done that, let's take the smaller foliage brush. We're going to do a little blending also with those. All I'm doing is I'm going to tap down the bottom here. Okay. Each area has its own little, like, uh, I call it like a little fog bank. Okay. Each area would have their own little patch of, of fog. Okay. Now I'm just going to take it, I'll just tap it on this. I got towels everywhere. Tap a little bit on the towel. I'm just touching, lightly touching, and going upward with it. That's all. And then fade it out. Fade it right on out. Okay. Fade it right on out. Now you see, you think I've destroyed those tips up there. I didn't. Just add them right back in. They go back in like nobody's business. Okay. See that? That easy. Just tap them right back in. Now we're going to tap these off. Tap them off pretty firmly. Varying degrees. Okay. Vary the heights of them. And then 
Just blend it on out. Blend it on out. This here you don't have to worry about. I'm not really concerned about all of that. Just when you get to the edge here, you need a little fog bank. Right, don't go too far up into the tree. Just, just gently blend it on out. All right. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight planes already. I'll show them to you. Light background, clouds, stars, mountain, cloud in the front, hill number one, hill number two, hill, hill three, hill number uh, four going on. Okay? Just that quickly. All right. All right. Now let's move on here. Let's uh, do a little more brush cleaning. Like I say, you work from the back and go to the front. Um, almost a systematic thing. The ideas, totally up to you of what you want to do. Let your imagination run wild. Once you get the, te the technique down, your biggest challenge will be actually what to physically paint. Okay. I think I'll, uh, I think I'll use this brush. I like it. Okay, still keeping with the dark theme. All right, I want to add some uh, some large pines uh, in here, and I do believe I would like to use more of this nice phthalo blue. I'll mix it in with a little bit of the sap green. Okay, now I'm using a larger fan brush for these. Okay, these trees would be a little. <coughs> Excuse me, a little sparse. I really don't want to destroy this beautiful faded area in here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll I'll put a little um, little touch here. And you take it from the side and just tap. Go side to side. It gets larger as you get towards the bottom. I just want them about that size. Okay. I'll put one little friend right here and just lightly, lightly tap, something like that, okay, not too many of them, maybe I have them trail off a little bit here, I'll put oh, another one, a larger one, like I'm doing it with a larger larger fan brush. A smaller fan brush would probably give you a little more control over the detail. There we go. Something like that. And I'll put a small one right beside it. This, I'm just tapping it in, going from side to side. Gives you, like I say, that illusion of your trees. Okay. I'm going to put in a couple more. Um, I'll, put, I'll put a nice size one right here. Like I said, you add the separation, you have to keep your trees fairly dark here in the front. Yeah, that's a nice one. I'll keep a giant one in there. All right. Um... I'll add one more. I have, I have a little buddy, a little crooked buddy. Okay, he will step down and do the baby. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, like so. But you know, I just can't have him in there all like, you know, just with no land in between. Put patches of grass in there with them. It's light, light little patches, like so. A little bit here and there. Just whisk it upward, okay, like so. And you can even, when you do this, settle, it, settle in your little land area here in the back, okay. Just like so. Here, 
we'll leave them there, just like that. Okay. So now you got all sorts of planes working in there, and you can do this all day, really. All right, I'm just giving you uh, little examples. Okay. Now I'm gonna clean off this brush. Like I said, the colors are fairly strong. Okay, very strong colors they are. So you want to clean that brush off fairly well. All right, wipe it off here on the side. Take I'll take my uh, <coughs> a little palette knife here. I'm gonna go into the jet black. I'm gonna add a little. Just the appearance of them. They don't have to even show up all the way. Like so. Okay. Yeah, I like the way that looks. I like the way it's coming out, actually. Okay. I'm going to do something a little crazy here. I'm going to take my little palette knife. I'm going to tap. Lightly tap. Lightly tap. black mix in, but then just tapping a little bit, just under, underneath the tree a little bit here, there we go, look at that, okay, all right, see that, just to separate it out there a little bit. Okay, let's add, oh, I'm going to add a little land mass area in there. So I'm going to use a little bit of the dark, really dark brown, a tad of the uh, blue, and the black. Okay, I'm gonna mix it all in together, cut across just like the mountain area. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, very lightly, just like you were doing the mountain, I'll just put a little bit, just let it, let it break, like, like that, just let it break, okay, go as flat as you can, just let it break a little bit, maybe I want, want something in here, like a little trail, okay, I'm going to call it that way, just break, keep going, just let it break, keep it moving, just like that. Now I still I want it darker up in here a little bit. Just add a little bit. Just keep your knife, palette knife, pretty flat. Okay. Nope, not thick enough for me. I want some there, yeah, I want some texture in there. There we go. Like I said, I want a little path in there. Just tap it. Tap it a little bit. But that's basically what I wanted here. Okay. Have it. Here a little bit, like so. Get it in there. Have the trail run off. Like that. Okay. So we've got a nice little land mass in there. Okay. Now that I've did that, okay. Oh I think I will clean off this brush and use my two inch. Okay, and let's pull downward. Pull down. Pull down. Straight down. Let's go pull down. Pull down. Why not? Pull down. Go ahead and pull down. Okay. After you pull it down, go across. Go across. Go on the other side. Pull it across on the other side there. Okay. that. Didn't know you can get water that fast, could you? Not only did you get water that fast, you just did the reflections off your trees. Just that quickly. Pretty nice, right? But you just didn't know. Just didn't know. All right. Now that we got
got that done, clean off the brush. When you do things of this nature, sometimes they experience other ideas. Okay. I want some rocks. Yes, I do. But what I'm going to use is um, I got a pretty thick silver brush here. All right. And I'm going to use one, one side, okay, as um, uh, the light side. I'm dipping in a titanium white. And then I'm going to still use that blue-black color, uh, a little bit of green, on the other side. Okay. So one side, it's got the darker color other side has got the white okay obviously the white side will be the side on top I'm just going to put in a little rock or two pretty much like that I, I need to brighten up that um, I want to brighten up that rock a little bit okay so all I'll do is I'll go back over again just like that in that direction I'll put a couple in here Keep it as smooth as you can, uh, as you can. Okay, I'll pull one up here like that. And if you find it not to your satisfaction, dip a little bit more into your dark color. Okay, and dip a little more into your light. Okay, and you just go over it again. Okay. Pretty much like that. Now you got a couple of rocks in there. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'll take the dark edge, go along here in the bottom, maybe just touch a little bit down on the bottom here. A few of them. Get my head out of your way and you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now that I've done that, <coughs> I will take one inch brush if I can find it and lightly let's pull downward it gives you rocks the rock reflections in the water just that easy okay and you really don't technically don't have to fade them in okay you really you don't have to okay yeah but they are in there okay and they look pretty good all right now, I've got the plains, the hills, the clouds, the different types of trees, all right? Now we have this open water part in here, okay? I'm going to throw in a pretty nice sized tree somewhere around there also, but I'm going to uh, put some, uh, probably put some land area in there. So I'm going to rinse off the silver pretty good here. Now this silver brush that I've got is a little softer in texture, um, so clean it off fairly well. Okay, let it maintain its, its shape. All right, and let's work on putting a. I think I'll put a nice. Uh, I'll use a large foliage brush and put some uh, bushes in here. The bushes, oh, I'll still stick with the, um, I'll still uh, stick with the black and the bluish tint. I want it pretty dark, so the highlights really pop out. So black, phthalo blue, okay. I'm going to pull it, brush in one direction like I normally do. If you've seen the episodes, you know what I'm talking about, okay. And I think I'll start off here in the corner. Just like that. Okay, 
just like so. I have it come up around like that. And maybe like this. Okay. Now you gotta be fairly dark on the edge here. Okay. Um maybe I'll have a trail. Bottom edge, I want fairly dark. There. Have it blend right in there. Now, I kept it fairly dark on purpose. I want to add the highlights. They, they really pop out there. Okay. All right. Let's rinse off this brush real good. Like I say, it's a black. Halo blue gives you a nice dark color there. Okay. All right. I want to pop a little bit of the. Uh, I think I want some yellow in there today. Now I'm going to dip fairly decently into this yellow. Okay. And I'm going to go still in this one direction. It's a lot of yellow in here. Okay. And I am going to just slap it right in there. Okay. That'd be kind of strong with your yellow to make it pop out there. Okay. You want it because you want it to show in that dark. Okay. Like so. Nice little highlight color. And the more you tap into it, the greener it's going to get. Okay, and I'm going to dip a little bit into my magic white, lighten up that color a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. Put it on the brush, just a tad, and there. You see, it really sticks out because a thick, a thin paint will adhere to the thicker paint. Okay. And that's the effect that you're getting, that you're seeing right now. Okay. There, put some down below here. And it really adds to the depth of your painting. As you can see it fairly clearly right now. Now, I'm going to throw a tree in there. Um, see, yeah, we still got a little time. I'll throw a nice little tree up in there. And this time, I'm going to plant the tree in the middle. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit of the uh, burnt umber here. And a little bit of this ugly color I got for, uh, for mixing all this paint together. I'm going to use that as my bark. Okay. I'm going to marble it off. I'm going to come over to the side so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay. I have the tree. Um, I think I'll start it off right here. Yeah, just like like so. Okay, she's gonna be a little, little bit on the rough side here. This tree, I'm still keep it in the general type of direction. Okay, cut off a little bit more paint. Okay, I still go in that one type of semi-circular fashion. Okay. Just like so. It's going to be bending right on off the page there. Okay. Take it. I'm going to flatten it out. Cut across. I'm going to just have it, I'm going to just have it trail. Keep going. Keep going. Man, it's, it's going to meet the other, other part in there. See it? Up here? There. Like so. Okay. Because it almost looks like two pictures until you, until you start joining them together. And I'll put one right here. I have him come straight out like that. Okay. And I'll throw up a few limbs. Just touch. Have it come on down like that. Go up and across. Like so. Maybe even over there. 
Um, throw in a couple here, like that. Throw in some out here. Okay. I'm um, gonna throw one out here, like that. And we go right off the page there. Have them come in another direction, like so. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Basically, that's all I need. I just need one tree. Okay. All right, let's move on to some highlight color here. It's coming from the upper right, okay? So I'm going to get some of this white. All right, scrape off some nice chunk of the white. And all I'm going to do is very lightly caress. The paint that's on here is going to take off what it wants. All right, if you keep it in a circular direction, you'll be, you'll be good to go. Basically, you can get to the point where all you have to do is touch the thing. And that's what I'm pretty much doing right now. Okay, just touch it. Get some more white. And all you're doing is adding a slight highlights to them. Okay. And basically, all you have to do, like I said, is just touch. All right. That's all you have to do. Get some more white. Coming out of the other side. Hopefully, you can still see it. My head is not too much in the way. Okay. Here, some branches you will see, some you will not. When it, when it comes time to put the uh, the actual leaves on, but there you go. Okay, you can see them. They come right out here. All right, let's get on to the fun part, which is adding um, some leaves. But before I do such, I'm going to go back into my foliage um, brush here, get a little bit of magic white. I'm gonna dip into my, um, dip into a little bit of this white, okay, and maybe a little bit of crimson if I can get some out of there. Yeah, yeah that's what I want. A little bit of that crimson, and I'm gonna throw in a nice little heavy bush right in there, like so. Look at that. How that for really opening it up? Okay, nice little red in there, like so. Just put it, put it right in there. Okay. Okay. Now, for the color of the leaves of this tree, I think I want it to be a little different. I do. Remember, this is your world. Okay, to do with as you please. I got a fair amount of um, liquid white because I want it to sit right on top of this uh, painting. Okay, so the leaves are going to be a little different this time around. Okay, like so. Because I want the leaves to really pop out and show through. I'm going to have them, this wild color, so it really shows up against the mountain. Okay, right here against the side, up here on the top. I'd like to thank you for checking out the tape. Well, you take your DVD. And um, if you like what you've seen, or if you don't like what you've seen, give me a line. Let me know what you think about these. All right. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Send me some of your work also. Okay. As you see, we pretty much just about got a finished painting here. Um, what I did not get to show you, well, maybe I will. I think this is going to last a little bit over the time because i got to show you what this is going to look like when it's finished. I forgot about the... Um, I forgot about adding the, um, taking off the contact paper. And you've got to see what it's going to look like. Because you, you're going to just love it. And hopefully it'll spur some ideas for yourself. So let me continue that on. This will go a little bit over it, not much. But hopefully it'll be uh, worth it when you, when you uh, see what I do. Okay. Now, that's pretty much a done deal as far as uh, the tree is concerned. All right. I guess I want uh, the tree to look a little bit unusual. Okay. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. There. Okay. 
I'm going to add a little bit of the white. Spread it out. Got to add some glare. Nice little thin line here and there. Add it right across. Maybe have some here. Make sure you line, keep them as straight as possible. Okay. As straight as possible. All right. All you need is a thin touch. Maybe around the rock area here. Just thin little touch here. Little touch there. In the back background, just a little separation. Okay. There. Just like that. All right. Now, I just want to add to, to the effects here. Remember, I have those uh, stencil cutouts. And what you can do, when you set the brush down here, is go to a local art supply store. All right. And get yourself a tube, or I mean not a tube, but a can of, it's the type of paint that leaves a texture, texture paint. The more you spray on it, the higher the texture. Okay. Just need a slight tube of that. All right, just cleaning off the brushes here. Let me get onto this part. Now I do have a few tubes of this uh, texture paint. All right, and I think I'll use the darker, the brighter. I got two kinds. One's a maroonish kind, and another one is a <coughs> the black spackle. That's that's the that's what it's gonna look like. Okay. Now, you're going to wonder, well, how are you going to do all of that when you already uh, have it painted on here? Okay. Very simple. I also got a little bit of the contact paper left. All right. And so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the contact paper and go just on the edge as close as you can. To the edge of your painting because you don't want to get the extra spray on the um, on the paint itself okay and you just take it okay and go in the opposing direction with it like so and like I say this paint once it hits it sticks like glue I just want to add texture to the painting itself. Okay, that's one side. Okay. I didn't get on the physical picture itself, so don't worry about that. On this side, you can do pretty much the same thing. I move my head. Okay. Now, if you want, you can also take your hand and block it. Okay. But if you go at an angle, you'll pretty much miss your painting. If it hit your hand, then more than anything else. Okay. This is all I wanted to do. Just like that. And that's that's it. It dries very fast. Okay. And now what I'll do is I'll just peel it off. And show you what it is that I actually took all this time um, to do. Alright now get off the bottom. Okay. Now the top I have fastened to the easel. And all I have to do, just unscrew it, lift it upward, and very gently, very gently, because you have that, that um, easel, uh, you, have, you have to just get it. Now once you get it, right, you Continue it very lightly, very carefully. Just peel it right off. Let it come right off. No problem. Make sure it is away from your painting. And there you go. How's that? I'll paint it out a little bit. You can see it. Okay. Now you have the texture painting the design 
the whole design itself. Got the whole shebang. Once again, it is uh, about five minutes or so uh, over the time. But um, I really hope you enjoyed this painting. Hope it spurred some ideas uh, for yourself to do. Like I said, I started off with liquid black, liquid white, and just painted it, cut out the stencils, cut out the pattern, and there you have it. Um, it will surely grab people's attention, and um, they would love to have something of this hang on their wall. Uh, great conversation piece. And until next time, happy painting and God bless.